Hi, it's me Dina Amir and welcome to my channel. So for today, we're going to learn about basic phrases, resentment, never mind. But before I begin for this video, I'm just going to use informal pronunciation. For those of you who still not clear yet, what is informal pronunciation? Please watch my number 53 video, which is about confusing pronunciation. So our topic today is resentment, never mind. Before we begin our lesson, I'd like to share a bit with you. So I like to talk about this topic because this is one of the things that destroy my life. So basically, whatever bad people do or did to us, of course it's bad, I won't justify that, but somehow the way we react to it very, very important. The way we react to it, that is the circumstance that determine where we will go in life. So in my case, like some people did bad to me. Many times I cannot stand up for myself because of many reasons. So I keep that feeling in my heart. So I keep that resentment. I don't feel like I want to revenge or something, but that feeling is there. So this feeling somehow killing me as a human being. Because most of the time when you have this resentment in your heart and it's accumulating with time, you become very depressed and very sad. Many, many times, this resentment cloud my judgment in many, many important decisions in life. So in many decision making, I wasn't able to do proper planning like short term and long term. I just didn't have that. What I had on my mind back then just to run away from that circumstances but of course it doesn't solve any problem right but it's difficult you know it's difficult doesn't matter people tell you okay no point of focusing on that because somehow sometimes you cannot control your own feeling so when you don't know how to manage this resentment properly then it will affect your life so that person who caused you trouble happily enjoying their life and your life not only bad because of them but it's getting worse because it's affecting you on your decision making for your future so that's really something affect my life very much so i want to tell you moral of the story here which i learned in the hardest way there are things you can fight for justice for example somebody rob your house you cannot just forgive and forget you know somebody do crime to you cannot just forgive and forget and you have to make a police report and fight for justice not only for you but for someone else out there however in certain things which you have no control over and it's not even in the law so you can decide to forgive or not and there are things that not even eligible to fight for okay there's no law for that for example somebody accuse you somebody destroy something what you have so this one sometimes you really cannot stand for the justice so this one you have to decide whether you want to hold the grudge or you want to just forgive and forget if possible to forget but i have to remind you not all cases you should forget because somehow when you forget then that person will do the same thing over and over to you because you are somehow kind of like vulnerable. So if you hold grudge like me and it's really horrible, not only horrible feelings, but your life also will turn upside down. Because sadness and depression won't help you go further in life. And somehow, sometimes, bad decision will make you pay that for whole life or nothing. Even how much you hate that, you have to let that feeling go. So in my case before, that I cannot fight for it, but I was always in that situation. I was not smart enough that I didn't know how to run away from that. So supposedly, if you are in that toxic environment, you have to stay away from it if you cannot turn that toxic environment into a positive one. So you have to go away from it so you don't become toxic as well because it's easily to get influence from the environment so if you cannot fight you have to stay away for whatever reason and then you don't have to keep it in your heart religion practicing people sometimes they forgive for god and everything so in case if you don't believe any of that afterlife thing 
then you have to forgive because of yourself. Because if you don't forgive it, then you have to keep the burden in your heart and somehow that burden really will eat you up with time and it's not good. So up to you to forget or not forget. But somehow to let things go is so important. And same goes if you do something bad to people. That was also one of the biggest weakness I had before. Like when I did something bad to people, I was so obsessed with it. It makes me felt so guilty. And that guilty feeling like so intense guilt that destroy me as well. So for that one also, you have to forgive yourself. Not only forgive others, forgive yourself as well. So for this one, that's why I like to share with you how you want to respond to people in case they come back to you after they did something to you. In case if you want it that way. In case if it's not so severe form of crime they did to you. So resentment or vengeance in Malay is dendam. 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 I give here for my Malay example. Dendam yang tidak berkesudahan. Dendam yang tidak berkesudahan. Dendam yang tidak berkesudahan. For speaking, dendam yang tak sudah. Dendam yang tak sudah. Or even without yang, dendam tak sudah. Dendam tak sudah. So it means never end, resentment or vengeance. So talking about the feeling, feeling of resentment and vengeance. So for memeli, kedendaman. Kedendaman. Oh, perasaan dendam. Perasaan dendam. For speaking, perasaan dendam or rasa dendam. Perasaan dendam or rasa dendam. Okay, both are common words. So I give here for memeli example. This is for memeli, kedendaman or perasaan dendam yang memusnahkan diri. Kedendaman or perasaan dendam yang memusnahkan diri. Kedendaman or perasaan dendam yang memusnahkan diri. For speaking, perasaan dendam or rasa dendam or dendam yang musnahkan diri. Perasaan dendam or rasa dendam or just dendam yang musnahkan diri. So basically in English it means the vengeance or resentment that destroy oneself. Next words, menaruh dendam. Menaruh dendam. Oh, berdendam. 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 So this means hold grudge. So for memeli, saya menaruh dendam padanya. Saya menaruh dendam padanya. Oh, saya berdendam padanya. Saya berdendam padanya. For speaking, saya berdendam kat dia. Saya berdendam kat dia. Oh, saya dendam kat dia. Saya dendam kat dia. So in English it means I hold grudge on him or her. Next, dendam kesumat. Dendam kesumat. So dendam kesumat is very strong feeling of resentment and hatred. So for memeli, dendam kesumat menyukarkan kehidupan. Dendam kesumat menyukarkan kehidupan. Dendam kesumat menyukarkan kehidupan. For speaking, dendam kesumat susahkan hidup. Dendam kesumat susahkan hidup. So in English, it means strong vengeance or resentment makes life difficult. Next word for revenge. So revenge, membalas dendam. Membalas dendam. So root word here is balas dendam. Okay? Memuaskan dendam. Memuaskan dendam. Memuaskan dendam. So root word here is puas dendam. Next words, melepaskan dendam. Melepaskan dendam. Melepaskan dendam. So 
root word here, lepas dendam. So, most common use word for speaking, as well as for formal Malay, balas dendam. Balas dendam. Balas dendam. So, formal Malay, I give here formal Malay example. Tiada gunanya membalas dendam. Tiada gunanya membalas dendam. For speaking, tak ada guna balas dendam. Tak ada guna balas dendam. Oh, tak ada gunanya balas dendam. Tak ada gunanya balas dendam. So, in English, it means there is no point of revenge. So, I give a situation here. Someone did very bad things to you, but this person repent and aware that what he or she did was wrong. So, this person come to you and say, I feel ashamed. I did many bad things to you. Saya rasa malu. Oh, saya malu. Saya banyak buat salah ke awak. Saya banyak buat salah ke awak. I feel ashamed. I did many bad things to you. So, you may respond like this. Tak apalah. Tu perkara lama. Saya dah tak ingat. Tak apalah. Tu perkara lama. Saya dah tak ingat. Tak apalah. Tu perkara lama. Saya dah tak ingat. Oh. Tak apalah. Tu perkara lama. Saya dah tak ingat dah. Tak apalah. Tu perkara lama. Saya dah tak ingat dah. Tak apalah. Tu perkara lama. Saya dah tak ingat dah. So it means never mind. It's an old matter. I don't remember anymore. Okay. You try to let things go. Oh, you may respond like this. Tak apalah, semua orang ada buat silap. Tak apalah, semua orang ada buat silap. Tak apalah, semua orang ada buat silap. Oh, tak apalah, semua orang ada buat salah. Tak apalah, semua orang ada buat salah. So, it means never mind, everyone does wrong. Next, tak apalah, saya tak ambil hati pun. Tak apalah, saya tak ambil hati pun. Tak apalah, saya tak ambil hati pun. So, it means never mind. I don't even take it to the heart. So, ambil, change the L to K. Ambil hati. This is for speaking. Tak apalah, saya tak ambil hati pun. About ambil hati is actually an idiom. It can be positive connotation and negative one. So, ambil hati here, for example, you try to capture someone's heart. And then, another one, like you, you're not offended with something. So, that is ambil hati as well. So, another one is offended with something. So, this one, saya tak ambil hati pun. Next, tak apalah, saya tak simpan dalam hati. Tak apalah, saya tak simpan dalam hati. Tak apalah, saya tak simpan dalam hati. So, it means never mind, I don't keep it in my heart. Never mind, I don't keep it in my heart. So, tak apalah, saya tak simpan dalam hati. Oh, tak apalah, saya pun dah lupa. Tak apalah, saya pun dah lupa. Tak apalah, saya pun dah lupa. Never mind, I forgot already. Oh, another option. Tak apalah, saya pun pernah buat awak terasa hati. Tak apalah, saya pun pernah buat awak terasa hati. Tak apalah, saya pun pernah buat awak terasa hati. So, it means never mind, I also did offend you. So, this one, this person trying to say 50-50. Next, tak apalah, saya pun pernah lukakan hati awak. Tak apalah, saya pun pernah lukakan hati awak. Oh, tak apalah, saya pun pernah lukakan perasaan awak. Tak apalah, saya pun pernah lukakan perasaan awak. So, it means never mind, I did hurt your feeling as well. Next, tak apalah, kita kan manusia biasa. Tak apalah, kita kan manusia biasa. Tak apalah, kita kan manusia biasa. Never mind, we just regular human being. So, can here like to emphasize that. Next, tak apalah, mungkin saya pun ada buat salah kat orang lain. Tak apalah, mungkin saya pun ada buat salah dengan orang lain. Oh, kat orang lain. Oh, 
tak apalah mungkin saya pun ada buat silap dengan orang lain. Oh, tak apalah mungkin saya pun ada buat silap kat orang lain. So it means never mind, maybe I did wrong as well to someone else. Oh, another option. Tak apalah benda dah lepas. Tak apalah benda dah lepas. Tak apalah benda dah lepas. Never mind, it's over. Tak apalah bukan perkara besar pun. Tak apalah bukan perkara besar pun. Oh, tak apalah bukan benda besar pun. Tak apalah bukan benda besar pun. So basically it means never mind, it's not even a big matter. Well, try to shrug off not important thing. Okay, otherwise you will regret whole life. I really learned this in a hardest way because I have difficulty to control my feelings. But with time we try to learn. So we try to be patient with unimportant things. Well, I guess that's our lesson for now. Thank you very much for watching me. And if you like my video, please support me on Patreon. And for those of you who's watching me right now, thank you very much. And till we meet again then. Bye.